Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Regain your confidence. Dear brothers and sisters, how do you regain your confidence if you have lost it? Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid, in the book Hiliyat al Alib al Ilm, he writes that confidence is one of the attributes of the true Muslim, whether male or female. A student of knowledge or a warrior, confidence is the foundation on which we build our character, make decisions and face challenges in life. It will help you to stay brave in times of difficulty. This video will give you practical tips on becoming extremely confident in your life. Do not misunderstand. It is very important to have a balance and to have true confidence. True confidence is dignified. It is quiet. It is self-assured. It is not boisterous, arrogant and oppressive. And similarly, it is not timid and weak and meek. There is a balance, so make sure you watch until the very end. Do not be weak. Number one, identify the root cause. As Muslims, we understand that our self-worth is not determined by material possessions or societal standards, but rather by our relationship with Allah. Therefore, you need to identify the root cause of your lack of confidence in order to regain it. Many of us have fallen into the trap of comparing ourselves to others, especially on social media, and this can lead to destructive feelings of self-doubt. Do not misunderstand. A healthy amount of self-doubt was implemented by the Sahaba, where they would question their own motives and confront themselves with issues that they had and mistakes they had made. This is healthy. But when we forget that our worth is not defined by our number of followers, when we doubt even our values and everything about ourselves, when we doubt the love that Allah has for us and doubt if we are good people or not, this can lead us into a place where our own unique strengths and weaknesses are lost, where our purpose in life, using these strengths to serve Allah and the community around us is forgotten and where we fall into weaknesses, Another root of low self-confidence among the Muslims is the negative influence of others. We're surrounded by people who may not always have our best interests at heart. We may encounter individuals who constantly belittle us, criticize us, or make us feel inferior. This can take a toll on our self-esteem or make us doubt our self-worth. Whatever it is, even if due to past traumas, it's your responsibility to identify it and to heal it. That's the first step to regaining your confidence and your control. Once we understand the root cause of our low self-confidence, it becomes easier to find a solution. Number two, practice self-compassion. In a world that constantly pressures us to be perfect, it can be easy to fall into a cycle of self-criticism and self-doubt. Because of this, your confidence can take a major hit and leave you feeling defeated. As Muslims, we are also faced with the additional pressure of living up to the expectations of our deen. We aim to be better Muslims and when we fall short, if our hearts are healthy, we can be overly critical of ourselves. The opposite extreme is when we fall short and it doesn't even affect us. This is a dangerous place to be, brothers and sisters, and do not let yourself fall into either extreme. One powerful tool to overcome these negative emotions and extremes is to regain your self-confidence through self-compassion. This is when you are kind and understanding towards yourself if you are too extreme upon yourself. At the other extreme, you will need to practice self-discipline and being a bit harsher and more strict with yourself. However, for those, and we assume the majority of those watching, are strict on themselves because you're watching this, inshallah. If your heart is filled with regret and you feel bad for the sins and errors that you have committed, then know that your heart is alive and healthy. Continue to correct yourself continue to improve. However, be sure to also be compassionate with yourself and understand that you are on a journey of self-improvement and you are moving in the right direction. Do not misunderstand. 
This is not a free license for all of the people who are lenient and liberal on themselves and easy to sin and do not feel any pain in their heart over their mistakes. To give themselves even more compassion, they need less hope in Allah and more fear. For the one who is filled with fear and regret, he needs more hope. And this is the balance. There are two wings. And when one is too big and the other is too small, the bird will not fly. Number three, remember your successes. We all have milestones, big or small. Whether it's acing an exam, getting a promotion at work, meeting that deadline, or completing a challenging task, each success contributes to building our self-confidence. And as Muslims, our ultimate success lies in the pleasure of Allah and the attainment of Jannah. One of the best ways to remember our past successes as Muslims is by keeping a gratitude journal. Some people may call this the cookie jar. Good memories that you can go back to in order to restore your confidence and remember that you are capable, you are gifted, and you are unique. This is a simple and effective way of reminding yourself of the blessings and successes in your life. Practice gratitude for these. Remember the lessons that you took from them and remember the best parts about who you are and harness them to think about who you want to become and how you can channel these good things about yourself to become even better. Number four, fake it till you make it. The phrase fake it until you make it may sound counterintuitive. And in fact, it's a phrase I don't like to say because pretending to be confident when you aren't may seem false and even hypocritical, but the fact is sometimes it can be a powerful and effective strategy to boost your self-confidence. It is a mindset that encourages acting as if you are confident, even if you don't feel it in the moment. And yes, it is likely that people will see right through your behavior and maybe you see right through your behavior, except maybe, just maybe, it can be the beginning of a positive shift, of a new change in behavior. Many people, when they begin a positive and new change in their life, they make sure that it is based on the right intentions, and then they proceed with confidence. But there's still this resistance, this feeling, this isn't really me, this doesn't suit me. This is shaitan that is standing in your way, brothers and sisters. Now don't misunderstand, we are not encouraging you to be fake and to pretend to be boisterous and charismatic people. When you are not, we simply encourage you to confidently be yourself, to stand assertively for what it is that you truly believe in. And if you feel that you are not confident in your own self, not confident expressing yourself, learn to be assertive and pretend that you are confident in your choices and in your speech until you are. This can help you to establish yourself and to actually feel that you are what you say you are. It is a way of starting to gradually shift your behavior in a positive direction, embodying these behaviors, thoughts and attitudes of the confident individual and of your future self, even if you are not there yet. This is by no means an invitation to become a fake person. The idea behind the concept of faking confidence is perhaps that you can slowly start feeling more confident. When you start behaving confidently, your body language will start to change and you will begin to portray a more assertive image, for instance, standing up straight. With your shoulders back, making eye contact, doing these things while speaking can make you appear more confident, even if you don't feel it internally. And in fact, almost every change that you make in your life will feel wrong. What feels right to you right now is what's getting you your results. And if you do not like your results, then what feels right is wrong for you. We often see this with people who refuse to follow the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see people who say the hijab just doesn't feel right for me. The niqab doesn't feel right. Praying five times a day doesn't feel right. Well, your feelings are wrong. What is right is the sunnah, and what is right is the deen. And so when you know that you are proceeding on the truth and on the right path, and your feelings don't agree, well, 
push past your feelings, brothers and sisters. Number 5. Take care of your physical health. Our physical and mental well-being are closely connected. Taking care of your physical health by exercising, eating healthy and getting enough sleep has a huge impact on your self-confidence and on your general ability to function. When you feel good physically, you're more likely to feel confident mentally. I've never in my entire life met a person who looked good, was physically fit, was doing well in their life and told me they felt terrible. Have you ever noticed that? Why is that? Our bodies are an amana, a trust from Allah. That means we have a responsibility to take care of them properly. You can't expect to eat junk and feel good and to do nothing and to be strong. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate physical exercise daily. Get outside in the fresh air. Have some morning sunlight. Enjoy your life. Make sure that you consume healthy meals. Number six, set small, achievable goals. It is human nature to dream big, but we forget that the path to success starts with setting small, achievable goals. And sometimes when we lose our confidence, we stop setting any goals at all. When you set yourself a goal, my dear brother, my dear sister, set a small one that you can successfully accomplish. It will give you a sense of accomplishment it will be an easy start and it will lead to a chain effect. This, in turn, boosts your confidence and motivates you and sets you for new goals and new work towards them. As we continue to achieve these smaller goals and our confidence grows, we gain the belief that we can conquer bigger goals as well. When we set unrealistic goals or we are unclear in how to quantify them or how to achieve them, well, that's a recipe for failure that can create unnecessary pressure and a feeling of inadequacy. Setting smaller goals allows you to break down larger goals into smaller, more manageable tasks. This will help you to stay consistent and disciplined. If you want this message to reach more Muslims, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Write, we are brave, to let me know that you made it to the end. May Allah reward you for your efforts. Until next time, stay brave and steadfast.